Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi thriller film, Tremors Part 4, The Legend Begins. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. It is the year 1889 in a mining site in Nevada. While the miners are having a conversation, one man hears a roaring from the cave. When he looks up, he hears a loud thud and a muffled cry. Seconds later, the man is nowhere to be found. In a blink of an eye, another miner is beheaded, causing chaos around the mining site. Later on, the mining area is now deemed closed. Many people, even the town's blacksmith, leave the city. More people will leave because the mine won't open soon. The town will end up as a ghost town. Afterward, the villagers receive a letter saying that they shall expect the arrival of a great conqueror. To raise their hopes more, the elder tells them that the mine will not stay closed because the ore that they are mining is valuable. Juan, the sole survivor of the mine, says that the worth is less than what they are expecting. The elder tells them however it is, nobody's walking away from riches. On the other hand, Juan disagrees and says that if the elder sees what he saw, he might also want to walk away. The villagers ask questions about what Juan saw, but he chooses not to explain. Juan believes that it is better to shut his big mouth because the villagers might also lose hope. It isn't long until a letter from the owner of the mine arrives at the scene. He says that in Philadelphia, the mine is going bankrupt, so he will take matters into his hand. Mine owner arrives in Nevada, and the villagers welcome him to the now-named City of Rejection. After the greetings, mine owner asked if he could see the man whom he had sent three letters to ask him why they were all unanswered. The villagers say that the man left, resulting in mine owner's dismay. After that, the hotel owner called Christine explains the situation in the mine and asks if it is the reason why mine owner is in the area. Clueless mine owner now understands why the villagers are needy in his presence. Christine proceeds to tell him that 17 miners were killed in just one day, hence being the reason why the workers abandoned it, and no one knows what happened inside, except for Juan. Juan is assumed to be back shortly, so Christine invites the tired mine owner to rest at her hotel while they wait. Along the way, Christine shows mine owner the infrastructures built in the village, the bank, the blacksmith, and the post office. Unfortunately, all buildings are now closed. When they arrive at the hotel, mine owner notices an arsenal and asks Christine if she's a collector. She explains that the firearms belong to the miners who came west to mine. The miners loan money from Christine for their expenses. However, the mining heist was a failure, so they used their firearms to pay for the loan. Adding to mine owner's dismay, the hotel only serves beans because of the supply shortage. After the meal, Christine can be heard playing the piano while her assistant cleans the table. Mine owner offers to give him the last piece of gingerbread if he'll fetch his bottle of peach brandy in his bag. However, mine owner isn't true to his word. He gives the assistant a piece of advice instead of a piece of bread after fulfilling the said task. He says that anyone can be taken advantage of, so the assistant should do it too. Finally, one arrives, and he explains to mine owner that there is plenty of silver inside the mine. However, no one wants to go inside because of the incident. Mine owner asks him to tell all the remaining miners to hunt down whatever is causing this problem. One says that he will talk to some miners who camp in the north of town. However, he says mine owner should double their wages or else they will not go. Left with no choice, mine owner agrees and says that one should ensure that his resources will not be squandered by the miners. Mine owner says that he will accompany them himself first thing in the morning. Tomorrow comes, and Juan introduces the miners of the north to mine owner before they go to the mining site. Since no one wants to lead the way, mine owner supervises the endeavor. Inside, skeletal remains are seen, but the culprit monster remains to be a mystery. For them, it is a sign that the mine is perfectly safe to reopen. As the sun sets, the miners camp outside together with mine owner. One miner named Soggy plays his harmonica because it helps him sleep. On the other hand, the other miners find it annoying and out of tune, flooding him with a series of complaints. Soggy then decides to go play his harmonica to their horses. On the other side of the camp, Juan asks mine owner how soon he thinks the mine will reopen because he needs to keep working to save his ranch. Besides being a miner, Juan's father dreams of having a ranch for his family. Unfortunately, his father died when Juan was still a boy. That's when his mother decided to move their family to a mining camp because she believed that the miners always needed a woman to do the chores. While they are enjoying the sentimental conversation, a loud thud is heard from the horse's stable. The miners quickly wake up due to Sabi's harmonica being thrown at their faces. The Ferrari horses start to run away one by one, leaving them all behind. With worry faces, the miners start to look for Sabi, but just like all the other cases of disappearance, Sabi is also nowhere to be found. Suddenly, all the other miners are gone too, because something from the underground attacks them out of nowhere. 
Juan signals mine owner to climb on the rock, only an inch apart, and Juan will get eaten by the creature before he can even reach the high ground. Luckily, he slashes his pickaxe at the right time and spot, making the creature scream in pain. Mine owner sees that the dead creature has no eyes. Juan theorizes they only hear sounds to hunt. However, they can't hunt when their prey is standing on a rock. The foothill road is made of rock, so they can climb through it and walk to the city of rejection. That way, they can avoid being eaten by these creatures. As soon as they arrive at the city of rejection, Juan and mine owner report to the people what happened on their expedition. Juan explains that if these creatures aren't underground, they fly very fast, earning the name Dirt Dragon from the villagers. Mine owner hurriedly requests the need to send a telegram and hire a gunfighter. The monsoon comes, and the villagers gather at the bar. The assistant notices a silhouette on the wall. He tries to call their attention, but fails to do so until the silhouette grows closer and barges its way in. A man introduces himself as a gunfighter, and looks for mine owner, who posted the advertisement for a gunfighter. He seems not to believe how dangerous these creatures are when the villagers try to explain the situation. The villagers doubt his skills, but he earns them again by shooting against the wall. Morning comes, the gunfighter, mine owner, and Juan all pick their guns and set off to hunt. Juan tries to make a noise by stomping against the sand, but to no avail. Passing through a hot spring, the team finds four broken eggshells, telling them how many creatures there are. Juan has killed one already, so they suspect that there are only three creatures left. The team continues to track the creature through its smell, and they find its scales just above the mountain. Juan says that it's shedding like a snake. Looking over yonder, Juan recognizes a wagon, so they walk in its direction to look for the man who owns it, only to find his head but no torso and limbs. Nighttime comes, and the three sleep like a log after a long tiring adventure. All of them snore as they let their guards down. They don't even notice how the Ferrari horses are protesting outside until something pokes Juan's face. He screams out loud, making the other two wake up from their deep sleep. The creature searches their shelter in an attempt to eat them. But luckily, they shoot the creature and it retreats. Mine owner seems to have a hard time firing a gun, so the gunfighter teaches him right on the spot. The creature is tearing the house apart because it can't break through the floors. Mine owner suggests they use the telegraph and send a Morse code to the bar. At the bar, the assistant quickly notices the telegram and breaks the code. The other men in the village will not be back until two days, so Christine decides to go on her own accord. Back at the hunting team, the gunfighter panics while waiting for the right moment to shoot the creature until it unexpectedly attacks right under his feet and eats him whole. The gunfighter tries to escape the creature's mouth, but he's already too late. Christine arrives just before two creatures eat Juan and mine owner. The team goes back to the bar. Mine owner loses all his hope and tells everyone to forget the mine and go on with their lives. Juan disagrees, telling mine owner that he will go to Carson City to get blasting powder. However, mine owner still packs his things and decides to leave the city. Christine tells him that if he leaves, he can keep her horses and the other equipment, in exchange for the ownership of the mining site. Mine owner disagrees, but the villagers are persistent for him to stay. But no amount of threat or persuasion can make him change his mind. Moments after, Juan roams around the city, and he locates a creature. He reports his sightings on the villagers, and all hopes are lost. On the other hand, mine owner buys his train ticket to Philadelphia. A Morse code from the telegraph, coming from the city of rejection, is sent to the booth, but the man in charge laughs at their message. Mine owner leaves the man and leaves his ticket behind. Back in the city, the people prepare to leave until a noticeable smoke from the sand is seen coming their way. At first, they thought it might be the creatures once again, but the villagers celebrate when they see mine owner arrive in the city with a big wagon. He brings a cache of weapons and gives each one of them their own set of guns to protect the city. Another night comes, and the team starts to plan their counterattack. The assistant suggests they make a noise to bait the creatures. When morning comes by, the people start to build their defenses around the city. Mine owner sets his huge punt gun on the sand, while the other people are in charge of the noise bait. However, the creatures are nowhere to be found. Seconds later, the pole of cans starts to make a noise, signaling that the creatures are coming. The people quickly get back to their posts. As soon as the creature pops out of the sand, mine owner misses the shot, making the creature retreat. He proceeds to load up the cannon as quickly as he can, while the assistant warns him that the creature is coming back. This time, mine owner has a successful shot. Another huge creature attacks the cannon, and Juan becomes its next target. One smart villager away from Juan gets a huge saw and sticks it underground to make a sound. The creature leaves Juan alone, and then everything is silent afterward. The creature dies underground when it hits its head on the saw at a rapid speed. 
Only one creature is left, and the villagers fear that it's now intelligent. The smart villager nearly gets killed, but he is behind a statue. The creature swallows the statue instead of them. Juan remembers that they still have black powder left, and they can use it to blow up the creature. The market owner says he knows how to make a firecracker. The team tries their hardest to move as slowly as they can. Suddenly, the telegraph makes a sound and ruins their plans. The assistant nearly gets attacked by the roaming creature. Luckily, he escapes right in time. The creature is now stuck on the surface of the sand, but they can't kill it with their guns. The firecracker needs more time to finish, so mine owner makes a hook and sticks it right into the creature's back to pull it straight onto the engine. He successfully burst its organs out, and they celebrate their victory. Days later, the bank approves their loans, and they can now hire new workers to reopen the mine. Mine owner tells them that he no longer owns the mine, but the villagers disagree. They say that they need more than they do. Mine owner says he only has two conditions to assume ownership. That is to never tell anyone about the creatures, so that people will not get scared to settle in the city. The second condition is that the first proceeds of the mine will be used to build a hotel and a better market to pay off Juan's land. He also wants a new statue to honor the heroicness of the smart villager. Everyone agrees to the plan and later changes the name of the city of rejection to the city of perfection. The threat of the creatures is long gone and the city is at peace once again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.